Hello once again. V. Anton Sprawl here, talking about how you can learn to think like a programmer. Thanks to everyone who has hit the like button on previous entries or subscribed. And please do send me your suggestions for future episodes, either in the comments or go to my website to get my email address. In this episode, I want to talk about what's really the killer issue for many people learning programming, and that's the blank screen problem. I mean, when you've got a program to write, specifications for what the program's going to do, but you haven't been given any particular insight into what the program will look like. There's lots more to problem solving than just getting started, but if you can't get past this point, then nothing else really matters. And if you do get started on the right track, it makes everything else so much easier. Let's pick a sample problem to discuss. Suppose you're working on some kind of text editor, a word processor, something like that. What you need to program at this point is a find and replace operation. Specifically, it's going to be a whole word match. So if the word to be found is cat, it's not going to match with catalog or concatenation. For the purpose of this problem, the text you would be searching is stored in some kind of aggregate structure, like an array of characters, let's say. The word to be searched for is an array of its own, along with the replacement word. So the code you're writing is supposed to replace every occurrence of word A with word B in the main text. And to avoid making this problem trivial, let's say you don't have any access to some code library that does the searching and replacing for you. Depending on your level of expertise, this problem may look easy or it may look quite hard. If you've never actually done string or text manipulation programming though, your initial guess as to the difficulty may be off. For example, just identifying where words begin and end can be tricky. If we had a string of words separated by spaces like this, it would be pretty easy. But it's going to be more like this, and all that extra punctuation complicates things. Anyway, let's assume this particular problem does create the blank screen issue for you. That is, let's say you don't know how to get started writing this program. So what to do? Let me start by listing some things that you shouldn't do, things I've seen many programmers try. Number one, give up. You never get anywhere if you just quit. Number two, start coding and hope that you can muddle your way through. Now, filling in the blank screen with typing looks like progress, but if you don't have any plan for what you're doing, it's wasted effort. It's like if you have a long walk ahead of you it sounds like it makes sense to start immediately, but that only works if you know what direction to walk. If not, there's a good chance you're heading further away from your goal. Number three, find some code that looks similar in a book, on a website somewhere, and try to modify that into the program you need. This is a bad idea. I have a whole chapter in the book about reusing code and how to do it in a way that benefits you now and in your long-term development as a programmer. Some key points in that discussion are that if you don't really have an idea of how to write a program, you're not likely to be successful trying to modify an existing program to do what you want either. Also, even if you're somewhat successful, it's not helping you grow as a programmer, and you don't want to be the kind of programmer that always has to rely on others. And speaking of relying on others, number four, find someone else to write the program for you. I'll just leave that at that. Okay, if that's a list of what you shouldn't do, what should you do? The short answer is you should find something about the program, some part of it, some aspect of it that you do know how to do and do that first. Sometimes, for example, a program will work in stages. First A will happen, then B, and then C. If there's one of those three parts you think perhaps you can do, focus on that and worry about the rest of it later. Sometimes people hear this advice and they think, oh, but what if the only part I think I know how to do is part C? 
and I can't write that if A and B aren't in place. Usually you can work around that though. Let's suppose that by the time you get to part C in a particular program, you're supposed to have an array that's filled just with numbers in the range of 1000 to 1999. And they're in order, and you're not sure how to get from the original input to that point. Okay, just hard code an array that has the kind of data that, that you need so that you can work on part C. Then you can make real progress. And in writing that section, you might get some ideas on parts A and B. But what if the problem doesn't break down into obvious stages like that? Then what you want to do is temporarily reduce the complexity of the problem. That is, keep making changes to the problem to make it easier and easier until you get to a point where you can tackle it. Then once you tackle that simple problem, start adding back the parts that you removed. Let's go back to our find and replace problem. If the problem as written is too tough to tackle all at once, what if we said, you don't have to replace every occurrence of the word in the text, just the first one. Or maybe we ignore the whole word matching and just do a simple text match. Or maybe we don't replace anything yet, we just find it. And the output is the number of the character position where the word is first found. Or maybe we leave out the find and replace and just try to parse the main text, outputting each word on a separate line. If that's too tough, output just the first word. There's always a way to make a problem simpler, and you just have to keep doing that until the problem is simple enough to solve. Then you start heading back in the other direction, always looking to add the smallest amount of new functionality that you can. Once you're already looking at the code that locates and outputs the first word in the main text, for example, writing the code that outputs all the words in the main text is going to look a lot easier. That technique of breaking down problems you can build back up again is really a cornerstone of the approach I recommend in my book, but it's especially helpful for getting started if you're stuck right at the beginning. As always, I hope this helps some of you out there. Remember that if you're having trouble with this problem-solving stuff, you're not alone. Just keep at it. Remember to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and send me suggestions if you've got them. Thanks for watching.